Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to take a look at the question, why do we learn how to reason? Why do we take geometry in the first place? Geometry teaches us how to put facts and numbers and observations and logical laws and all together in a logical sequence. Is that any good? Do we use that anywhere? It turns out it's actually very important. We become better at solving these types of problems, and I'm going to show you an example here, another example in the, next, in the next video, where I have experienced a lot of my students have a very difficult time figuring something like this out, and so that's why geometry is such a good thing to learn how to do that. We must learn how to identify patterns, recall rules, remember postulates, and then to be able to place them in a logical sequence or a number of steps. So that's the whole idea behind doing this kind of thing. So let's take a look at this example. Here we have an equilateral triangle. All angles, therefore, must be 60 degrees. And here we have two lines, dotted lines, drawn perpendicular to the two sides. So this is perpendicular to this side, and this line here is perpendicular to this side. And then we draw a line where these two lines touch, right here, from here to there, and we claim that this angle here is 40 degrees. How big is the angle theta? How do we figure that out? So it turns out it always makes it easier if we compare angles to a horizontal line. So what we're going to do is I maybe use a different color. Ah, I'll use red. There we go. So let's draw a reference line here that is horizontal. And let's draw another reference line over here, which is horizontal, which means that the two lines are parallel to one another. And now we realize that this becomes a line that connects both this line and this line right here, which means that this angle in here must be equal to this angle in there because those two angles are what we call alternate interior angles. So if we call this angle A and we call this angle B, that means that the measure of angle A must equal the measure of angle B. All right, if that is true, we can then see that, well, the next thing we should probably do is the following. If we now take a look and see that this angle here is 40 degrees, and the question is, how big is this angle right here, from there to there? So the next thing we're going to do is try to figure out how big this angle is. And how can we figure that out? Well, let's continue with this line this way, like so. And we realize that this angle here this angle here must be 90 degrees because we know that this is perpendicular to this line right here. That means this is also a 90 degree angle. And then we realize that the three angles of a triangle always must add up to 180 degrees. Since this angle here is 90 degrees and this angle here is 60 degrees, then this angle here must be 30 degrees because that way they all add up to 180 degrees. All right. If if this angle here is 40 degrees and this angle here is 30 degrees, that means that this angle here must also be 30 degrees because these are also alternate interior angles. We see this line here must be parallel to this line and these are two alternate interior angles, so these must be equal as well. That means this angle is 30 degrees, which finally then means that if this total angle is 40 and this angle is 30 degrees, then this angle A must be 10 degrees. So we can say, that the measure of angle A must therefore equal 10 degrees, which means that the measure for angle B must also be 10 degrees, because after all, the, angle of, the measure of angle A must be equal to the, the measure of angle B, because they're alternate interior angles. And then we realize that if the angle from this line to this line is 30 degrees, that means that the angle from this line to this line must also be 30 degrees. So if I take this angle right here, for the very same reason it is for here, this angle must be 30 degrees. And then finally I can say that the measure of angle theta must be equal to 30 degrees minus the measure of angle B. So finally I can say that the measure for angle theta must be equal to 30 degrees minus the measure for angle B and the measure angle B is 10 degrees, so therefore this is equal to 30 degrees minus 10 degrees, which is equal to 20 degrees. And so finally, what I was trying to find, I was find, trying to find the angle for the measure for angle theta, which ends up being 20 degrees. Now, 
this problem here is probably a little bit too advanced for this stage of the game. We haven't learned a lot of these rules yet. This is just for illustrative purposes. Again, the question is, why must we learn how to reason? And so we must learn how to reason by using a combination of identifying patterns, recalling rules, remember postulates, and then to be able to place them all in a logical, logical sequence of steps to come up with the final answer. So this is just simple for illustration. We were given that this angle is 40 degrees. We're trying to find the angle, the measure for this angle theta right there. And notice it took about five logical steps to get from one to the other. And so that is why we learn geometry, to learn how to do these kinds of problems. So there's just one example. There's probably many examples we can come up with that show us the reason why we must learn how to reason through these kind of steps. And on the next video, we'll show you another very interesting example of something I know a lot of students always struggle with. And again, you can see that if we learn to come up with these rules and spin them all together, we can come up with a good pattern, how to come up with a reasoning logic to help us with solving these types of problems. And that's why we do it.